Good evening. If you are watching this video, to get in the proper frame of mind, you probably ought to go to YouTube and open up a copy of Pomp and Circumstance and play it about 27 times. Because that truly is what happens at just about every graduation, because that seems to be the only song we ever use to introduce people to, you know, to graduation. Well, that being said, I thought I would take this opportunity to fulfill a lifelong dream. Because every year at this time, I wonder what I would say if I were given the chance to give a commencement address. Of course, all those big slots have been taken by famous people, and who would listen to me? This year, however, it's different. Anyone who's giving a speech is doing it virtually, and so I have the same opportunity to reach people that former President Obama, for instance, has as he gives his commencement address tonight. I guess it's pretty obvious that more people will listen to him than will listen to me, but I have the same opportunity. And so I thought about family who are graduating this year, including my son, Timothy, and a nephew, Charles Wells, as I thought about friends from church and other places that are graduating. And I thought about all those students who have made my life greater because of the privilege of learning from them, even as I sought to teach them. I thought, now is the time. It would be nice if I could be really original, but I'm going to quote from one of the most memorable graduation speeches of all time and beg begin by reminding you to wear sunscreen. A quote we all know came from Kurt Vonnegut. Only, of course, it didn't come from Kurt Vonnegut, and it wasn't a graduation speech, it was advice to graduates in a newspaper column from a journalist by the name of Mary Schmitch. According to Ms. Schmitch, the advice to wear sunscreen was the only advice that she was going to give that could be proven to be useful. And so I echo her in reminding you to wear sunscreen. What this story reminds us of of in that in these times it's still important to research what you hear and learn to discern fact from fiction. Many who graduate, whether it be high school or college, seem to think that their days of learning and investigating truth are over. They believe that they'll never read another book, and as appears to be obvious from some of the misinformation flying around the world on the back of social media, we'll never have to think critically again. We accept the fact that Kurt Vonnegut told us to wear sunscreen because we've heard it on good authority that he said that. In our information-driven society, though, it's possible to look more deeply into the background of rumors and supposed facts than it has ever been before. And to be honest, I believe that it will only get easier to do that. For example, I knew that Mr. Vonnegut isn't the one who told us to wear sunscreen, but I had never heard of Ms. Schmitch until I started searching, and that search took me all of five seconds. Our society eagerly accepts any news that appears to support our preconceived notion of what the truth is without checking those truths by ourselves, that we see a growing divide among people, often fueled by the proliferation of rumors and bad information, passed on as truth because the friend of a neighbor had a brother whose uncle was there. You probably had to do research of some kind in your high school and or college classwork, and in so doing you learned something about finding legitimate sources. Put that trend into good use and learn to search beyond the headlines so that you can know and share the truth rather than parrot misinformation because it sounds good enough to be true. Be even more skeptical, skeptical of those things that seem to agree with your preconceived notions. As a follower of Jesus Christ, I would remind you of his words starting in John 8, 31. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. I invite you to examine the truth about Jesus Christ. What does the Bible say? What do we see about him in history? Learn the truth about the one who is, in my understanding, the way, the truth, and the life. While this is a religious statement, it's also a great guide for living. Learn the truth. Don't let yourself get enslaved in seeing the truth through headlines, social media posts, or even ideology. When you learn the truth, you can be free from worrying about what others will say about you. And so I remind you again, wear sunscreen. It seems like such a little thing to do, and let's be honest, for some people, it may not be necessary. In reality, one-size solutions don't always work for all people, but for people like me who go from pasty white to angry red, red in two minutes or less under a hot sun, it's a necessity. And yet, as small a thing as it is, and as necessary a thing as it is, I can't count the number of times my wife has asked with a knowing green, grin, did you forget your sunscreen again? I can't tell you how often my daughter has confessed that she forgot to wear sunscreen. <coughs> It's such a simple thing, but so forgotten by many who need to do it.
Use that as a reminder to learn to do the simple things in life. Don't wait for someone else to do things. Don't expect things to happen magically because they need to be done. Just do them. I heard a story about a pastor who was showing people around his church. When someone mentioned how clean it was, he noted that everyone in the church thought it was important to keep things clean. The questioner decided to test that pastor, thinking that a megachurch pastor wouldn't do those simple things, got ahead of the group, balled up a piece of paper, left it on the floor ahead of the group where, where they would be going. The pastor not only noticed the trash, he picked it up in stride and threw it in the trash can without saying a word. He humbly did the simple thing and didn't say a word. I should add that I heard the story from the man who left the trash on the floor. It was a simple act, but how many of us would walk by and not do anything, or expect someone else to do it because that small task was beneath them? We've received a harsh reminder, though, that those little things are important, more important than we used to think. As we've dealt with the dangers of the coronavirus, we've learned how important people we usually overlook are. Most people generally appreciate healthcare workers, but the workers who clean the hospitals, the custodians and janitors, are being recognized now as well they should be. For years they've kept things clean and sanitary, and only now do we recognize how important that really is. School kids have recognized this for years. Most kids love the custodians. We need to learn to love the custodians again. I urge you to make that one of your missions in your future. Get to know the custodians and their families where you work. Appreciate them and let them know how genuine your appreciation is. You may have lived through this pandemic because a custodian sanitized something that might otherwise have passed the disease on to you. Jesus recognized this principle about doing the little things. He reminds us, as noted in Luke 16.10, that he who is faithful in little things will be faithful in big things as well. There is no task in this world that doesn't have importance to someone. There are no small jobs, only small people who look down on others who do the seemingly unimportant jobs well. I have a friend who appears to be breaking out as a novelist. As his internet fans communicate with him, we remind him to remember us little people when he becomes a big name. He understands that there are no little people who have helped him in his achievements. Those who have supported him have our own gifts, and he appreciates our friendship and support. Learn to appreciate those gifts in others. Remember that the only little people in this world are those who would see others as little and unimportant. Remember that all people need to wear sunscreen. It's a great equalizer. When we wear sunscreen, we're reminded that we're supposed to take care of ourselves. Perhaps I should have used a different phrase than wear sunscreen these days, but wash your hands just doesn't have the same commencement history that wear sunscreen does. Has anybody reminded you to wash your hands today? Just like wearing sunscreen, it's one of those little things that goes without saying, but it's one of the most important things you can do to protect yourself from the coronavirus. We all know that we protect ourselves so that we don't get sick, but let's be bigger people than that. Let's protect ourselves so that we don't get others sick. Now, under the threat of the coronavirus, people can pass on the infection long before symptoms appear that will let them know that they're sick. We should do everything we can to protect ourselves so that we don't pass anything on to our friends and loved ones. There's controversy in some circles about wearing masks. People on both sides of the issue will fling statistics and anecdotes around to support their side of the argument. I wear a mask in public, but not, as some would say, out of fear that I'll catch the disease. I wear it in the spirit of, if I'm infected, this will help keep me from passing it on. And if it doesn't, it won't harm anyone else. I won't tell you whether or not to wear a mask, but I'd remind you that our reasoning one way or the other should be about our concern for others. The story is told that in the early days of the Salvation Army, the general organization, and I think it was William Booth, sent a telegram to every worker in the organization as a Christmas reminder. It was one word, others. While we need to take care of ourselves, we need to focus on others. We need to remember that it's not all about me and realize that no matter where we go or what we do, we have a responsibility to help others. Philippians 2.3 reminds us to think of others more highly than ourselves. Jesus reminded us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Do you make those around you better for being with you, or do you have a ne neutral or negative impact? I'm not a big basketball fan, but one of my favorite players of all time is Michael Jordan. I always smile when people say that Jordan was good because he was surrounded by so many other great players. If you look at the careers of those other great players, though, by and large, their greatest days were when they played with Jordan. Michael Jordan made the other players around him better. 
Wherever you may go in life, whatever you may do, find ways to make others better. Encourage, uplift, praise. The more you inspire others and make them better, the better you'll feel about yourself. As I wind down, I want to reflect on the humor I find and the fact that we call this a commencement address. It marks the end of a high school or college career. You may even be remembering friends, professors, teachers, and others who played an important part in your life during these days, and I hope you are. I hope you even remember people that you might not have realized played an important part of your life during these days. But that's not commencement. Commencement is the beginning, the start of something new, and now you'll be embarking on a new chapter in your life. You're going into a world with problems. Make it better. You'll be dealing with people who have issues. Make them better. You'll undergo strife and conflict to yourself. Be better. Be better by doing the little things, by caring for others, and by caring for yourself. If you want a simple reminder to be better, keep a tube of sunscreen by the door, and as you leave each day to make a difference in the world, put a small bit of sunscreen somewhere on your body. Let that little bit remind you that this is only the beginning, and you can make this a better world. Now, go out, have a great life, and remember, this is only the beginning.